Hi everyone and welcome to Creative Chelsea. If you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up or commenting below. If you want to see more of my videos, press the subscribe button and click on the bell for notifications. If you need any Stampin' Up! products to make this card, you can visit my online store and the link is in the description box below. When you purchase Stampin' Up! products through me, you can earn free products. Check out my current customer appreciation products on my blog and the link is listed below in the description. Make sure to follow along after this video to see what the others have made. Click the link to the next video in the description box below. Today I'd like to share with you the card that I made for the Global Stampin' Video Hop. We're going to be focusing on the trends that we're seeing in paper crafting. And so today I'm going to be sharing with you four different trends that I used to create this card. So the first trend that I'm going to share with you is this beautiful background that I've created using the blending brush from Stamping Up. Now, blended backgrounds are really popular right now, and it's so easy to create a beautiful blended background using the new blending brushes. And the colors that I've used are Cinnamon Cider and Cajun Craze, which is also the second trend that I'm sharing on my card, which is to use warm color palette. And so by doing these two brown and red colors, we're going to create this really beautiful kind of a sunrise feeling to our card. So you're going to pick one of these two colors and we're going to be doing a diagonal blend. And so I'm just using this same blending brush for both. Whenever you're blending, you want to start off your paper and then come onto your paper. And you just kind of work that blend until you get the color that you want. The richness and the darkness that you're looking for. Now because I'm doing this at a diagonal, I want to make sure that I get some color right there in the center of my diagonal as well. So I'm going to go back to my cinnamon cider and get more color. Again, start off so that I don't get any harsh lines and work it all the way to that mid section where my colors will blend together. And you can see that as I add more color, that um, blend will get darker. I think I'm going to go ahead and do another layer of blending. I always start in that bottom corner just because that's where I want the darkest of my color to be and then I just blend that color out to where it should be lighter. A little bit more right along the base here and up just a little bit. Okay. So now I'm going to move over to Cajun Craze. Just want to make sure that I don't have too much color sitting on my blending brush before picking up some of that beautiful red. And then again, start off and then start on. Now I do have a little tip for you. When you're blending, you want to kind of keep your fingerprints off of the previous blended areas. So just grab a scratch piece of paper, cardstock, anything really to hold your paper in place while you add your other colors, just so that you don't get fingerprints where you don't want them. And then bring that color up, and you want to blend those colors together in that center area. So if you're doing a horizontal or a vertical blend, then you're going to have it blend in that direction where they meet. And so you can see how that's coming together really pretty those two colors really blending nicely. Okay, so now you can see that beautiful blended background. And so we're going to now move to trend number three, which is to add texture to your cards. And there's lots of different ways you can add texture. You can add with um, designer series paper, pattern paper, um, stencils like what I'm using here. This is a the paper lattice and you could just add this directly to your card and that's going to give it that texture. But I wanted to use this in a unique way and so we're going to be using it as a stencil with the shimmery white embossing paste. So if you've never used the shimmery white embossing paste before, it's just really fun product. You just want to place your stencil onto your cardstock and then I always just open mine up just slightly so that I don't have a lot of air going into my container. You need to just get a little bit, maybe about a teaspoon or so, 
of white embossing paste and then add it to your card. And then with one of these palette knives, you're going to smooth it out. And you just want enough to um, kind of give you that fun texture that you're looking for, for your card. And it doesn't need to be perfect. You can have little holes where maybe it's not quite so thick. You can have jaggedy edges. That just kind of all adds to the fun texture that you're getting for your card. Make sure to come all the way down to the bottom, just tapping off what's on top of my palette knife so that I can get more down here at the bottom. And you just kind of keep scraping it back and forth until you have the coverage you're looking for. So something like that. So once you've added the embossing paste, you do want to remove this stencil quickly after so that you don't get it stuck to your cardstock. And then you do, you can try to save this, but I've just been throwing them away since you get a lot in a pack. And then with any excess, you can just add that back to your embossing paste jar. Make sure to screw that on really nice and tight. I always add another level of protection by adding it back into the baggie that it came in just to keep it from drying out. And then you do also want to clean your tools quickly after so that it, they don't dry and get ruined. And you can just clean them with a little soap and water. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and put this off to the side to dry and we can talk about the other beautiful details for this card. So here in the background of my card, I am using a fun pattern from the Bloom Where You're Planted designer series paper. And so I wanted to share with you those different patterns that come in the pack. And right now, does some of the designer series paper that Stampin' Up! offers is on sale until the end of July. So make sure to check that out if you're interested in this particular pack or some of the other designer series papers offered by Stampin' Up! So here on this side of the paper, you can see that it comes in some really beautiful, subtle patterns. On my original card, I've used this wood plank pattern. And then on my card today, I'm going to use the wood grain pattern. They have a similar look and color scheme to them. So I think they're both going to be beautiful. And then on the other side, we get some really pretty um, plant designs. And so I have used these on more cards and I'll show you those after um, we make our card today. So just some really fun patterns that you can use um, on these beautiful cards. So the last trend that I have noticed that's in paper crafting, and I think it's just barely starting to kind of show, um, especially with Stamping Up coming out with this really fun Plentiful Plants um, stamp set and the coordinating dies and then the Bloom or your planted designer series paper, you're starting to see the use of house plants in card making. And so what I've done is I have stamped these beautiful images from the Plentiful Plants stamp set and added them together to create some fun houseplant images and you can see here that we've got all different types of houseplants and we're going to be using those to create our focal point for our card. Now for this particular one I wanted to use two different colors and you change the direction and so I wanted to share with you how I did that. So I've stamped this first one in Evening Evergreen and just layered it behind a pot that's been stamped in Cajun Craze. And then the second one I've stamped in Garden Green. And I'm just going to add this behind the first one with some glue dots. So just take a glue dot and add it to the base of each section. And this is actually the same image you can see here that if you just bring these images back together, then they create that exact same shape of this first image. And I just cut them at that corner. And I'm gonna add them behind this first one. So I take the longer of the two and place it on the right. And then the shorter one comes in on the left, just like that. And that creates a fun multi-level, multi-colored image there. So the other thing I did is I created this um, shorter label 
using this particular label from the Ornate Frames dies. So you can see here that by adding it right over the greeting, it's just a little bit on the large size, especially when I'm creating a nice tight grouping. And so I wanted to slide it over a little bit and just kind of cut it down so it's nice and tight around my greeting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is line it up where I want it and then tape it down with some washi tape and cut out the whole thing with my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Okay, so this has been cut. What I'm gonna do is remove it from the excess cardstock and then I'm gonna slide down the label to the next on the left side. So I slid it all the way down. I cut it nice and even where I want it on the right. And so now I slide the label down, make sure it lines up nicely to where I want it on the left, and then take a piece of washi tape to hold in place. It's really important that everything is staying inside the cut line. So you see here, if you flip it over on the back, this is the cut line, this little ridge here, and I need to make sure that my label stays in place. So I do need to add another little piece of washi tape just to make sure that that doesn't slide around. And then I can just slide, run this through my cut and emboss machine um, just like this and it will come out just a little bit shorter and perfect for this sentiment. And it will end up looking something like this. So another little element that I added to the label is a little beveling around the edge. And so I wanna share with you how I did that. So you're going to place this back inside your label and you're going to take one of the styluses that come in the take your pick tool and I'm using the smaller one and you're going to run that along the out the bottom edge here. So let me show you really quickly up close. So right here there's an edge on the inside and you're going to find that and run that all the way around your label. So I'm gonna start in the middle and work my way to that edge and then just kind of run my stylus around the edge. I'm pressing pretty hard so I get a nice look to that. And then you'll want to slide this down either, you can flip it since it's the same on both sides or you can slide it down to the left side of that label and then come around and do the same thing on that other side. And this just creates a little more depth to your label and it's just a really fun look. So it looks like that when you're all done. So now that our embossing paste is dry, we're gonna trim this down. And I like to work just a little bit on the big side when I'm doing blending or working with embossing paste. It just gives me a, a bigger piece of cardstock to hold on to. And so the final size that I want to cut it to is three and three fourths by five inches. And so this is sitting at four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm just going to remove a quarter of an inch on all the sides. Okay, so now that we've cut that down and we have all of our plants and label ready to go, we can start to put our card together. So I'm just going to add these things to a card base of thick, basic white cardstock, and it's just your regular card base that's been cut to five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a quarter. And then I'm going to add the wood grain pattern paper to the front. And this piece is cut to a full front, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. And that just goes right on top. Then we're going to decorate the front of this piece before adding it to our card base. So I'm gonna add this larger plant first. I've stamped the pot in smoky slate and we've got leaves in pear pizzazz and garden green. I have curled the leaves just slightly with a bone folder and then added some glue dots on the back. And I'm gonna place that about center here on my card 
So about midpoint-ish and then just off to the center on the right side. Then I've got more of a medium with the same pot and this one's been stamped in Cajun Craze. Then we've got the Evening Evergreen and Garden Green in the background. This has dimensionals on it and I'm just adding that right along the edge just below that first pot. Then I've got a smaller pot. This one's been stamped in cinnamon cider, and then I've got soft succulent for the snake plant leaves. And that's coming off here to the left. I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit higher than my original design so we can see a little bit more of that plant. Next, I'm gonna take about 22 inches of the white baker's twine and fold it in half, and then take that half point and place it over the, right where I kind of want my um, bow to be. So that's the half point, and then I just wrap each end around to create a double wrap, and then I'm going to tie a bow right here. So you'll get something that looks like that. Then you'll take your greeting and you're just going to add that over the bow at the bottom of these cute little house plants here. So I'm just going to um, place a dimensional on the right side of this bow to kind of hold everything in place and then place a couple extra dimensionals on the left side. I might do two just to kind of give it the right height. So because I have dimensionals on this pot, and then I'm going to place a dimensional on top of that, I need to layer two dimensionals together to get the right height on the left side. So you'll end up with something that looks like that. And then you can add this to your card right in the center. At least that right in the center, just kind of eyeball. There should be about a fourth of an inch all the way around. Okay, so then you'll get something like this. And then if you want to, you can add a couple of these beautiful, elegant, faceted gems in this champagne color to kind of go along with that warm color palette that we're using. I've just added two up in the top and maybe place three down here near my other, on the other side of the greeting. So you'll get something that looks like that. And that card is all done. So before I say goodbye, I wanna just share with you a couple more cards that I've created using the Plentiful Plants stamp set, the coordinating dies, and the Bloom Where You're Planted designer series paper. Remember all that beautiful paper. So I created four more cards. And so I just wanted to share with you some more ideas on how you can use house plants in card making, which is again, one of the trends that I've touched on for this video today. Okay, so thanks so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed seeing these beautiful cards made with different trends that you can see in paper crafting. If you're interested in getting written instructions or seeing close-up images, of this card that I've created today, you can visit my blog, creativechelsea.com. Make sure to check out the next video for the video hop by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.